Wow, this is the owner of the store. Amazing that he's going to do a video. But prepare to be disappointed. <laughs> from Games of Berkeley, and it's time for another tutorial video for a paint night kit from WizKids. This time it is the Ogre Zombie. Now, this came out uh, just before Halloween. We're making it available to you uh, just after Halloween, but that's okay. Yes, he's an Ogre Zombie and it's a scary subject, but we are approaching an election in just a couple of days and that's scary too. So. Here we are. Now, you might think that I am uh, an unusual choice for this painting video, and you would be correct. I am not a professional by any means. I am not even a miniature painting hobbyist. Uh, in fact, in the past five years, I have painted exactly two miniatures, and in the 30 years before that, I had painted one. But that's okay, this isn't about uh, professionalism, and especially with some shambling uh, mess like an ogre zombie. In this case, it's about having fun. It's about the experience. And, and that's what role-playing games like Dungeons and & Dragons and other, and other RPGs are about. They are about shared experiences, shared creative, imaginative storytelling with other people. And that's why something like this is a great thing to get started in miniature painting with because you don't have to use this just as an ogre zombie. It doesn't just have to be that when you are playing a role-playing game. If you are running an RPG and you need some other kind of monster or creature and you don't happen to have the miniature for that, well, this can act as a stand-in. So for instance, if you have, say, a vampire, or if you have a revenge demon, or a giant hive of bees, or just an ordinary con man. Well, this can stand in, no problem. Now, like I said, I'm not by any stretch of the imagination a professional. I don't have a studio, uh, I don't have a fancy uh, painting station in my house. I'm in the basement. All right, this is part of my, my partner's sewing supplies behind me, all right? But what I do have is enthusiasm. Now, if you need more than that, if you need more than just enthusiasm uh, and silliness and fun, well, then you should definitely go to WizKids. I totally said WizKids here. I did not say Realmsmith, even though they've done the tutorials for the previous kits. I definitely said WizKids. Boodly, 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 uh, there will be a link to that in the description below. Now, if you also, uh, like me, have a little problem with shaky hands sometimes, it gets a little worse when I am hungry or upset or nervous because I'm making a video on a subject that I'm not an expert in, uh, then there is a fabulous video that you can watch called How to Paint with Tremors. That is from Terrainosaur, also here on YouTube, and there will be a link in the description for that as well. Now, anytime you're going to be doing some painting or something else messy, you should protect your work surface, especially if it's something that wasn't originally intended for painting. Now, I like to use junk mail. Of course, there's plenty that we get these days. There are uh, political mailers, there's the grocery store inserts, all of that type of stuff. But my preference, of course, is to use absolutely useless rags. So, here's the kit again from WizKids, and let's open it up. So, the first thing, of course, is a really nice set of paints. Now, these are all the paint colors that you're going to need if you are following along with my instructions or with the instructions in the WizKids video. Boodly, boodly. There are 12 different colors, heavy skin tone, flesh wash, dead flesh, bone white, off white, tan, uh, what is that? Violet ink, leather brown, sepia wash, heavy sienna, gunmetal, and black wash. There are also two brushes. 
uh, one that is for larger areas and one that is for more detail. And then there are this uh, cup and three little kind of pot areas. Uh, you can use that as your palette. Uh, mix your paints there, rinse off your brushes there. Next comes, of course, the Ogre Zombie itself. Look at that fabulous fella. Man, such a pretty face. So, there he is. Look at that. What a gem. What a pearl. So you should definitely shake these up. They are uh, likely to have settled while they were in the packaging and shipping and all of that. So definitely shake them up, of course, with the lids tight. Make sure of that ahead of time. So the first portions of the body that you are going to be painting are the head, the torso, the arms, legs, hands, toes, and heels. That's a bunch of surface area. You're going to do that with the multi-purpose brush and you're going to use the heavy skin tone color. Now that, uh, you could thin that out if you wanted, but it should be about the right consistency to uh, paint on there in a nice uh, even coat so that the details don't get uh, filled in and later on you should be able to raise those details uh, very nicely. Now your next color is Heavy Sienna. You're going to use that uh, with the multi-purpose brush again. Now, of course, first rinse that out in your uh, water pot. Uh, don't, you know, use the water that you're supposed to be using to thin paints if you choose to do that, uh, because you don't want to mix those. You're going to be using that color on the loincloth, which is kind of furry, as you can see. The fur trim around the uh, ankles of this guy. The Morning Star handle, uh, the base of the miniature, and those cool Victorian sideburns that he's got. So our next color that we're going to use is tan, and for this one we're moving on to the fine detail brush. That's because you are going to be painting much smaller areas of the uh, zombie ogre's body. Uh, the mouth, the open flesh wounds on the torso and right leg, and a couple of those flesh wounds are small enough that they're difficult to see, so make sure that you take a close look if you are a completionist. And you are also looking for the, uh, you're looking to paint the eye sockets in that color. So now you're going to want to rinse your fine detail brush because you're going to be using that with the next color, Leather Brown. And this is the smallest portion of the base coat that you're going to be doing. This is going to go on the belt and the necklace. Uh, now when you're using these detail brushes, don't use a lot of paint because it'll build up and beat up and uh, there will be just too much. Use a very small amount as you are going. He is a zombie. No. The next color you're going to use is Bone White, and you'll be going back to the multi-purpose brush. Uh, you're going to be using this on the uh, wraps, the bindings on his wrists and feet.
The last base coat color that we're using is gunmetal. Now, mine was pretty thick. I don't know if that's how it always is. Uh, I did not thin it out though, because this is going on the Morningstar's head, on the spikes, uh, on the metal bands around the handle, and on the finial. Uh, now, the reason I didn't thin it out is because, well, this is an ogre. They don't use really kind of beautifully built weapons. And so it's okay if the texture on this is a little lumpy, a little uh, uh, kind of mottled. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I did use both brushes for this. Uh, I used the multi-purpose for the Morningstar head and the detail brush for all of the other bits. All right, now that those uh, base coat colors have had a bit of time to set, we're going to move on to the dry brush technique. Uh, we're going to do that first with the body, base, necklace, and sideburns in the dead flesh color. Yeah, zombies. Woo! Dry brushing is essentially what it sounds like. You are painting using an almost dry brush. You dip your brush, in this case the multi-purpose brush, into the paint and then you wipe as much of it as you possibly can off on a paper towel. You then lightly brush that over the uh, surface of your miniature and that highlights the raised areas. Rinse that multi-purpose brush off again, and then we will move on to a dry brush of the Morning Star, the wraps on the wrists and feet, and you'll be doing that with off-white. The last color in this round of dry brushing is tan. You're going to use that to highlight areas of the loincloth and that fur trim around the uh, legs of the zombie ogre. All right, so this next step is where he starts to look gory, I suppose. Uh, we're going to use violet ink, and you're going to fill in the open flesh wounds on the torso and the right leg, uh, his eye sockets, I will get some of this, and also his mouth. Now this stuff isn't quite thin enough straight out of the pot, so you'll need to thin it a little bit with some water, and you can use the uh, plastic insert from the kit uh, to uh, use one of those pots as a place to uh, thin out your violet ink. So here's where you really start to see contrast and detail on your miniature, and that is by using washes. The first one you're going to use is flesh wash. That's for the head, torso, arms, hands, legs, toes, and heels. Now what you're going to do is thin this out some. Uh, you can do, say, one part to one part, or uh, two parts wash to one part water, uh, however you like. Now you uh, wipe that on fairly liberally, but not uh, like slopping it on. If it pools up too much, then you can uh, dry your brush off on a paper towel and then wipe that on the pool, the liquid, and it'll pull up into the bristles. Uh, now what this does is it gets down into the cracks and the crevices and the wrinkles and all of those little details and as it dries it darkens and highlights those areas. It was about this point when I started making mistakes. I had been working on this for several hours without taking sufficient breaks or giving him a good amount of time for the paint to dry in between steps. Uh, I forgot to hit record a couple of times, so you're going to start seeing those, uh, those errors here. Whee! 
The sepia wash is next, and that goes on the belt, necklace, and wraps. Uh, for the wraps, you can use the multi-purpose brush, but for the necklace, you'll probably want to use the fine detail brush. Uh, this is really going to make those wraps uh, stand out, kind of like uh, as if it were a mummy or something. You can really see the, the dustiness and the dirtiness in those wraps. The last color in this round of washes is going to be black wash. Now this is going to really kind of uh, give you some really nice darkening of the morning star, the base uh, of the miniature, the loincloth, and again, man, those fabulous sideburns of his. So here's where we start to work on those fine, final details, and this is also kind of where my miniatures start going off the rails. Uh, as you'll see here, I made a few mistakes here and there, and also with fine details, those are really difficult for me because of my shaky hands, but they may not be so much of a problem for you. Now you will of course use the fine detail brush for this step. Uh, in this case, you're going to be using off-white to put tiny dots in both eyes so that his eyes kind of shine out a little bit. You are also going to paint the teeth. Now, they'll show up kind of brightly, but then we'll put a, a, another dry, wa uh, dry brush over them later to kind of dull them down. Keep your off-white paint close because you're going to be switching back to the multi-purpose brush and you're going to do a uh, dry brush on the wraps, again those wraps around the wrists and uh, legs. Uh, that's going to give it even more depth. Now if you have really good eyes and a steady enough hand, you can use gunmetal again and this time use that on the tiny little rivets right there on that necklace. Oh hey, did I say dry brush earlier? I meant wash. We're using the sepia wash on the teeth. Again, that'll kind of get down into the uh, small cracks that are in the details of those, and so they're not gonna be kind of glowing white. So, here he is. There is my ogre zombie. It took about as long as I expected it to, to paint, but it took even longer to get everything set up for these videos. So, um, there you go. I don't know if you can see that very easily, if it'll come into focus or not. But, yeah, he turned out okay. I'm pretty pleased, especially for my first time using some of these techniques, like the dry brush and the wash. Um, at least using them in earnest. Now I didn't wait long enough between each step, so he is a little muddled here and there. But, all in all, he looks pretty good. So, if you would like to paint your own Ogre Zombie, please Come to Games of Berkeley at 2510 Durant Avenue in Berkeley, or you can go on our website, www.gamesofberkeley.com, and the Ogre Zombie Paint Night Kit is available to purchase. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this is all about fun, this is all about the experience, this is all about using your creativity and your imagination. So please, run wild. Use the colors that came in the kit or use any colors that you have already. And we'd love to see what they end up looking like once you're done. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. So you've got your standard ordinary junk mail. You know, that could be used, but